thank you, Mr. Pradeep, for generous introduction. And I uh, thank OTA and PPI for having uh, invited me to moderate this session, which is one of very important product uh, on uh, Black Mud Pit. Minglava, uh, Ada, Namaskar, and hello to all our viewers and audience from all over the world. Uh, we will be discussing scenarios in two important countries, uh, for instance, countries, which is one is Myanmar as an origin, and another one is Pakistan as a destination. And I have two eminent personalities uh, for Pulses with me, and would be pleased to interact with them for Black Mart Pay, which is the largest export product from Myanmar, and fourth largest export product from the world after yellow peas, thick peas, and red peas. So let me just uh, start with uh, Mr. Zia, who will be talking about Myanmar scenarios. Uh, okay, Mr. Zia, and as we can see the numbers here, the production has been increasing in last two years, from 500,000 in 2019 to 550, now 625, and then next year expected is 675 this year. So what do you think, uh, because last year there was a sort of a thought that uh, the Myanmar growers will go for more green beans, but we can see that black market production has gone a bit high. So what do you think there is a reason for going for a higher production by the farmers in Myanmar? Mr. Zia. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank Wata Myanmar for inviting me as a panelist. Now, I move to your question. Uh, I would say the reason for this is due to uh, change in the farming commodity by farmers from a green bean, bean to black mape. Uh, in my opinion, comparatively, it's just to 20 to 25 percent of increase in production uh, from the previous year production of six lakhs twenty five thousand metric ton. Uh, when I refer your, uh, your data sheet, the last year, you know the. Uh, exports, total exports from Myanmar uh, already in year to someone like metric ten. So Myanmar farmers are confident that uh, even if the production reaches to someone like and above, uh, it will be possible to export them uh, without uh, any issue. Having said that, uh, with this uh, seven point five lakh metric ten, this uh, you know there wouldn't be any backlog of uh, unexported uh, crops. So, in my opinion, uh, there would be no issue with any amount of uh, bumper crop. Uh, that's all to say. Thank you, Mr. Jia. You said right. There will not be issue from your side, but there will be issue on the destination side. You know, people will be looking for the lower prices, and which which was seen by Pakistan recently. They are hoping the prices to come to 800 and fall below that. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. And in Gulf food, I see a lot of Pakistani buyers. They said, hey, what happened? You know, that happened from bumper crop. The prices again moved again up. So while the Myanmar is showing increase in production, uh, I can see uh, the from the Pakistan side, there is a decrease in production. You know, in, in, though there is not a very significant number, but still there is a decrease from 7,000. It has gone down to almost close to half, about 4,000. So, Mr. Bilal, you know, uh, what, what, what do you think? Why the farmers are not increased or... What is the reason that there is a decrease in production, please? Mr. Bala. Um, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I would like to thank you all uh, for giving me this opportunity to speak on Black Magpe. And I also like to congratulate PPIA and OTA to organize a wonderful webinar. Actually, there are three, four reasons this uh, the falling productions. Like, number one is minimum support price. Pakistan uh, government is not supporting farmers, you know. They are not giving any uh, support price for black magpie. So some of the farmer change their crops and they shift to, to other better return crops. And other reasons, that there, there is also tree cultivation areas. Some of the farmers shifted to tree cultivation. And the sowing area, all the uh, year by year, it's reducing. So that is the reduced overall production. Okay. Uh, well, uh, as we can see, the uh, overall the uh, production is falling, but you can see that there are consistent imports of Myanmar and other countries. So, which which these two countries like uh, it is really a news to many of the, our people. Maybe uh, Afghanistan also plays a significant role in the 
uh, in supply of the black pathway to pakistan you know it is it is quite significant in 2021 specifically if you see is almost yeah. 40% of the myanmar uh, number so can yeah. you bit explain a bit more on this afghanistan thailand side the major major import is from myanmar it's, i think it's a, normally it's a 70 to 80 percent is a major uh, import from myanmar and sometimes afghanistan's crops is good then we import and if their prices are competitive then it comes from through border from afghanistan to pakistan and about 15 to 20 percent is the afghanistan normally uh, we import and four to five percent from thailand thailand is also a, a, if, it's, if the price is competitive then we buy from thailand otherwise we normally buys from Myanmar only. Okay, so we'll go back to Zia and we'll discuss a very interesting scenario now. Uh, as we all know that currently, though it is a question for imports into India, but this, this will have a bearing on Pakistani exports also. So uh, uh, let us just analyze two scenarios. Now at the moment, Black Pot Pay is under OGL for uh, imports into India. Now. Uh, what if uh, the government does not extend the OGL imports beyond 31st March? Though we know there is a regime of uh, M uh, G2G MOU uh, imports, which is uh, for 250,000 tons of black mud pay. But there will be two scenarios. One, the extension of OGL imports beyond 31st March and no such extension. So, Mr. Dia, what do you think they impact on demand and prices and you know uh, will would be there in both these two scenarios uh, okay it's a good question uh, let me take a scenario one if there is a, an extension of OGL in india myanmar price definitely may go up but it would stabilize after some time irrespective of any selling pressure as india can continue to import without any any issue. So there will be a greater demand. But my concern here is, even if India extend the OGL, it would be definitely for short-term period. Uh, if we're lucky, uh, may extend it again uh, just before the time periods in. As it happened before, you know, last OGL, the notification came, until 31st December, all of a sudden, the increase to 31st uh, March. So now I go to scenario two. If there is a no such extension, there will be a less demand as India would not be importing and so the price would also be lowered. However, even if there is a no extension of OGL, there is a still MOU with India for 2,50,000 metric ton of imports. But looking at the data, India's average imports from Myanmar is 6,25,000 tons to 6,50,000 tons, which means India needs this much of quantity every year. So with the such data, I expect after MOU, there would be possibility of opening up OGL as it happened in previous year. No, last time when they started uh, giving the license, after the license, straight away, they opened up OGL. So in my view, in uh, both cases, uh, the price would range, range from $700, 750 to 850 at the highest for uh, Black Mape Yes, 2 This price is for FOB Yangon. Thank you. Uh, okay. Now, let's assume a situation when on 31st March, all of a sudden, the Government, even government decides that they will stop the OGL uh, imports and go for the MOU, uh, MOU arrangement. Now, how do you think to what extent both the governments are already ready to execute that MOU? Do you have any idea? Like, uh, uh, let's say, let's say take a scenario. So, can no. they start from April first week the MOU imports under MBU? There is, a, there won't be any issue for starting a, a, a under MOU. Because the notification already they, uh, given very clearly, and even in the Myanmar uh, with the Beans and Pearl Association and the, our association OTA already discuss how to uh, proceed with this kind of MOU. So it won't be any issue at all after uh, uh, 31st March. If uh, no extension of OGL, we can we can start uh, sending the cargo by MOU. No issue. Okay. Great. Yeah, of course. 
you know, for our Pakistan, uh, Pakistani friends, uh, this was an important discussion because it will have a straight direct bearing on the uh, exports to Pakistan also, like how the India behaves after 31st of March. So, uh, so now there will be a change in the price sales to Mr. Bilal. What do you think that uh, Pakistan depend on black part pay imports and when the prices move higher, uh, what, what are their uh, scenario and how do the, India, the, the Pakistan importers behave in such scenario when, as, as I can see, you know, myself experienced during Gulf War that uh, most of our people were hoping for below uh, 800 price, then they will start strike there. But unfortunately, it didn't happen. So when such scenario happens, what is the, usually the importer strategy? Then? Actually, Pakistan is a good consumption of black mat pay, but it's also an elastic market. If the price remains stable at $800, so it's fine. Consumption is okay. But if when it starts increasing through $800 to $900, so our local consumers little bit shifted to other products like such as green moon beans. And we have a very good crop of green moon beans from last four or five years. This green moon beans price is about 550 levels. So some of the consumers shift the uh, their consumption to green moon beans. This is the main thing. Uh, for the consumption. Oh, that's that's quite interesting. Like yeah. unlike in India, where there is no substitute for black mud pay, uh, in in Pakistan, this can be substituted by green movies. Is it maybe yeah. it's quite interesting yeah. fact for the viewers? Uh, yeah. Last year, you know, we have seen. Uh, I'm sure it is a global challenge on logistics and freight and shipments and vessels and containers availability. So you know, uh, in in while majority of shipments to India have been shifted or into break bulk, but Pakistan still would continue going with the containers uh, shipments. So, uh, Mr. Dia, this is a question for you that we have seen the freight moving from X to 10X in two years. So, what what do you think uh, going forward? Because as as the uh, India has been uh, rather lucky enough to get lower freight uh, through break bulk and lower prices than containers. No, which is not the scenario with Pakistan. So how do you foresee the near future, the overall logistic challenges and the shipments to Pakistan? Okay, uh, it's a very tough question. <laughs> At first, uh, let me highlight that the ocean freight uh, for Karachi in 2018, it was just $250 to $300 for a 120 foot container. Whereas in 2021, it went up to uh, $3,000. So uh, we can estimate by uh, how many times it got increased. Uh, now coming to your uh, question. Uh, you know, the pandemic has brought uh, big challenges uh, for uh, logistics. Uh, uh, the current market environment in ocean freight is incredibly taxing for shippers. Fried, fried prices, I mean the ocean fried, are all-time high, causing a great problems for lower margin business. No, see, uh, some of the, the, the problems, let me highlight here. Okay, I mean, the, I mean from the shipping perspective. The first one is a government regulation. Because of unforeseen circumstances like a COVID-19, there are long process and uh, bureaucratic regulations. Number two, uh, safety uh, management measures which affect the manpower. Last time when you used to do, uh, let's say, 100 workers in a, in a factory, they cannot go uh, with 100 because uh, to, for the safety measure, they have to reduce the manpower. So this, this, kind of, this is also one of the reasons. The third thing is a rising of fuel, fuel prices. No, we know we are, you know, now in Russia, Ukraine also conflict. All of a sudden, the crude oil price also went up. So the, the main point I want to say here, changing a consumer behavior around the world, household adapted to the pandemic and they started to buy more consumer goods. They want to store it, you know. Then the, 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 the fifth point I want to say is a port congestion uh, being impacted uh, uh, by COVID-19 infection of the port workers. Ports around the world experienced uh, uh, for partial shutdown. So we cannot blame the uh, Port Authority for this as we are all in the same pandemic si situation. The last point, which is important for Karachi, is imbalanced container movement. Uh, 
especially when we we talk to the shipping company they say once the container move into the karachi there is no chance of getting back because their exports are so reduced so when they quote the price for the ocean price including a return back container also this we how to uh, uh, note it down so okay as a shipper what we should do what we can do we can make sure we are fully loading every container that's why uh, recently if you notice last time the shipper used to load a 24 metric ton into 124 container nowadays in karachi everybody loading for 25 uh, metric ton because we want to we also want to cut the cost but i feel uh, you know the transport and logistics will continue to be under lot of pressure in 2022 so only one way we have to be patient uh, it's hard to predict when uh, when it will be come back to normal but as a consumer restore pre pandemic purchasing behavior volume of imports goods like uh, you know are likely to diminish and help the industry uh, out of situation i would like to give us some quote from the musk line and newsletter uh, uh, he said uh, exceptional market conditions uh, in shipping to persist until first quarter of 2022 or longer but the same uh, guy from the uh, musk line uh, mr lars michael jensen uh, he is the uh, network and market east west uh, uh, officer he say it is expected that the situation will improve bottlenecks or expected to be relieved but the same one more quote from the economist from uh, goldman sachs assume that backlog and uh, evaluated shipping costs are likely to be pers- persist at least through the middle of 2022 so we have to assume this 22 2022 going to be like this all these uh, challenges you know uh, have brought about a bottlenecks and a surge in freight costs uh, which will take to go back to pre pandemic uh, levels in short we have to be patient uh, before the situation unravels itself that's all i can say today thank you thank you mr jia you made uh, the whole logistic problems in such a way that it really become very small and tiny but uh, really you know you said we have, we have to become patient i believe if we freight prices keep on going like that then we will be- really become patient rather than being patient so uh, that's the today we all should wish that we should be in a shipping business uh, because this is the industry which has really made uh, in current year the profits were of about 10 to 15 years uh, uh, some total uh, in meanwhile of course uh, uh, we have seen the recent uh, russia and ukraine situation also you know and you are right yeah. that uh, the oil prices also moving at the high, high one of the highest level uh, but yes, uh, we have seen the freights which we are paying for the sake of our uh, interest for all the audience that in 2019, uh, 2020, we were paying $300 to Karachi and Chennai, which went up to as high as 3000 3100 just a couple of, after a few months. So 10 times, uh, but yes, business will move on. Uh, ultimately, it will pass on the consumers. And so long as demand is there, uh, we will uh, keep on sailing our boats. Uh, thank you, Mr. Dia, on the uh, elaborate explanation on the logistic challenge, which is a very big challenge. Uh, I think keeping the timeline into view, uh, maybe I would like to just, uh, uh, but before I close, maybe I can just ask two in, in, uh, quick questions to both of you. Well, Mr. Dia, what do you think the price band is expected in coming three, four months for Black Mart, say SQ, because SQ is more prominent in uh, Pakistan. So what is, when you when you compare a past two years record, mm-hmm. so whenever the new crops start coming in the market mm-hmm. during, during a, you know a February to May, this is the selling pressure you can see. So this is the good period uh, those who want to invest in the black map. So I expect maybe the FOB will be uh, seven fifty to eight hundred, which I just now mentioned is going to be a fluctuate within this. This is the range I predict. Bilal Bhai is looking with great keen interest on your face. Yeah. Uh, I could see the expression on his face that if you say 750 FOB, add the freight, then it will be it will be absolutely out. So you have to forget uh, uh, destination Pakistan, destination Aston. 
Bilal, bhai, you are right. But but mainly it uh, we it's on all, all depend on India, you know, because India has a higher consumption. So whenever they comes to buy, and we have to follow them. But currently, my in my views, eight hundred levels it can come because this year Zia Bai is also saying the crop is much higher than last year. So maybe the prices can come down below eight hundred, or eight hundred would be the good price for buying and as well as selling. I mean, we will wish for that, but. Uh... <laughs> Uh, let's just uh, see the scene. How the government policies are uh, yes. issued uh, around in and around uh, March end. I think that time we will have more clarity. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. It's, it's mainly India, India impact. You know, absolutely. mainly whatever. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so keeping the time line, uh, I think we'll now it is time for the Q and A question and answers. So we will take a couple of questions which I can see on the screen. Uh, is there any break bulb vessel booked for Karachi, Mr. Jia? You know, this is the uh, interesting thing, you know, uh, uh, whether no. any small size break bulb vessel has been booked for Karachi, if you have any information. You know, nowadays uh, getting a break bulk uh, is not easy at all. Uh, olden days, uh, you know, the container freight was very cheaper, break bulb was uh, costlier. Nowadays, uh, you know, upside down. So break bulb is a cheaper, container prices are very high. So, uh, uh, moving forward, sending a brake bulb to Karachi, there's a no feasibility, first of all, you know, because they market what I see, I think uh, uh, up to 200 container is uh, manageable for uh, with, without any selling pressure. So, to maintain the market within the level, uh, I think if you send the brake, brake bulb to the Karachi, I think market going to be, a, uh, going to see any heavy pressure. So sending a brake bulk to Karachi, there's no feasibility at all. So and the same time in the, the in the in the ship, from the shipper point of view, uh, we don't have a, any uh, plan to send a brake bulk to Karachi. Okay, Mr. Jia, thank you so much. But I can give you a clue here or maybe a tip here that brake bulk does not mean that necessarily it has to be full with black market only. Perhaps you may find some other interesting product which Bilal wants to be loaded together in one hatch. And then a couple other hatches would be, you know, this is the uh, going to be a good, a good uh, combination. Uh, okay. Now, this $800, somebody asked me this question that $800, which you're talking about, which Bilal is interested to buy at, uh, is, is FOB or yeah, CNF Yangon. Uh, it is uh, CNF, uh, Pakistan. CNF Pakistan. Yeah. CNF Pakistan. Uh, so that is the price which Mr. Bella looks at, look, going to look for uh, start, when he start buying for that. Uh, yeah. Now, a couple one clarification I would like to give here is that in the presentation you must have seen the numbers imports into Pakistan in Pakistan slide and exports to Pakistan in Myanmar slide. These two are the different numbers because the export from Myanmar has been considered as a shipment from Myanmar and imports into Pakistan. The numbers given are the import landed into uh, Pakistan. So there will be a slight difference because of the voyage and time lag. Uh, so don't confuse with the numbers there. So I think at the end we can summarize that, okay, Black Matwe is going to be uh, uh, the largest volume product from Myanmar, out of which 80% uh, goes to uh, India and about close to 8% uh, of the total exports goes to uh, Pakistan. Trade market still uncertain, volatile, unpredictable. And uh, shipment to Pakistan would still continue in uh, containers. And $800 is the resistance price, which we have to keep in mind, uh, viewers. You know, that's the important number. And that we have seen, actually, that when the prices went to 25 30 $40, uh, there was a big resistance uh, from Pakistan and hardly any business being done for Pakistan. Uh, I think uh, that's the that's end from our side. And I think we're just nice in time. Uh, thank you. Thank you, uh, everybody. Thank you. So, Gia, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you, Leah, sir. And then uh, thank everybody and all the uh, viewers. Uh, thank you.